Welcome to State of Tech. Let's take a look at the top five keyboards that you can currently download for your Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So these are the keyboards that I've downloaded from Google Play, and we're going to take you through each one of them and show you what they can do. So I have a note that I've been creating here, and right here is the keyboard that comes pre-installed with your Galaxy S7. Now it's not a bad keyboard, and for the most part you can do a lot of things that all these other third-party keyboards offer. You can come in here and you can swipe your letters, you have access to your emojis, you have access to different symbols, and even the actual voice search, if you tap on here and come up to the microphone, you can actually use the Google voice dictation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swipe down to our notification panel, and you'll see select keyboard. Tap on there and I can select any keyboard that I have pre-installed on my device. I'll choose the first one, which is flex key. We'll tap on there and it's gonna switch my keyboard out down here in the bottom of the screen. So this one's quite different than the Samsung pre-installed keyboard. This one doesn't offer swipe typing, so I can't swipe around on the keyboard and type what I was looking for. But you see I was doing some gestures there. I was doing like a rewind, which was deleting everything. But what I can do, and which is the actual reason for FlexKey, is they say that they have the best corrective auto prediction out of any keyboard. And for the most part, I find that to be somewhat accurate. But the more that you use keyboards also, the more that they learn your predictions and the more they actually autocorrect your text. So as I start typing, you see I have predictions up at the top, which I can go ahead and start tapping on. What's cool is I have quick access to emoji and they've added them into different tabs and I can swipe through there or tap on them. So that's really nice. Come back out to the keyboard. If I tap in the top right hand corner of the keyboard, you'll notice I have quick access to GIFs. So I can tap on here and I can actually search GIFs with this keyboard and then paste them into any one of my conversations. I actually have access to some images and stickers. So these are some nice little stickers that I can insert into my text message conversations or actually anywhere. And that last one that we have here is the little one that looks like a paintbrush. That's actually gonna be my flex key settings where I can change my theme, add in new extensions. So that GIF and the actual stickers, those were extensions so I can apply more. And then I can even adjust the size of my keyboard. So this actually offers a lot of different stylings. So here's I tap on any one of these themes, I can see how my keyboard is gonna look. If I tap and hold on these buttons, you see I can come in here and do some other options. So here's how I access that voice dictation, and I can even come into the actual global settings of the keyboard. And right here, if I tap and hold and swipe over, you'll notice I can have access to some additional characters, such as the period, question mark, comma, and exclamation point. So that was FlexKey. Now let's go ahead and choose another keyboard. The next one we're gonna look at will be the actual Swift keyboard. So I'll tap there. Now it's loaded in Swift. You see this one kind of looks reminiscent of the Samsung keyboard. And this one I can actually do my swiping. So if I swipe over, you see it's trying to predict what I'm typing. So as I go through, it gives me other suggestions. So if I go and do there. And with swiping, all that you do is you're basically trying to just swipe over the letters to fill in your word. So if I wanted to say, make the word house, I would just start at H-O-U-S-E, and there's house. For the most part, whenever you swipe, you get accurate predictions, but the keyboard will learn as you swipe over what you're actually trying to do. Now with this one, if I hit the one, two, three, notice it brings up more of a number pad looking feel. So this keyboard is kind of nice in that circumstance, you can quickly get access to a number pad. If I want to access emoji on this one, I need to tap and hold on the enter key and it brings me into an emoji picker. And they even have an option up here for my recent history. So when I begin using emojis, it'll show me my most recent. Coming back into the keyboard, what I want to do is on the top left hand corner of the keyboard, if I swipe that out, it's actually going to open up the settings menu. Here I can choose a new theme for my keyboard. If I sign in with an account and if I have multiple devices and I used a Swift key, it will actually sync over all my predictive text and all my language history with all of my devices. So that way whenever I say give it a new word or it learns my repeating history, it will sync to all my devices. I have my settings in here where I can change my keyboard layout. So here you see I have a thumb, it kind of splits the keyboard so that way I can peck at the keyboard with two thumbs. Come back in there. We even have options for more compact, which is a one-handed use. And what I do here is tap and hold on this arrow and I can actually choose which side I want that keyboard to show up on. 
So you notice when I tap and hold on the arrow, the keyboard moves either to the left or the right. This can be nice if you're using your phone one-handed. Open up the settings again, we even have options of resizing the keyboard. So if I go back into there, we can tap resize and you can even see how quickly the keyboard resizes and takes up more or less room on the screen. So let's go to our next keyboard. I'll select a new one. We're gonna go to swipe plus dragon. Now this one is themed to look like the actual Google keyboard right when you install it. And this one has swipe. This is one of the first keyboards that introduced the swipe feature. And as I type and swipe through, you see it's getting everything down pretty well. So I just typed in my full name. Most swipe keyboards have a hard time getting my last name for some reason, but this one seems to have gotten it on the first try. Now you'll notice on this one, there's no real quick way to know where your emojis are at. The way that you get into them is tap and hold on the enter button and then tap on the little smiley face and here you are brought to your emojis. And then what I can do is if I tap on the bottom left hand corner with the swipe icon, it's actually going to highlight my last previous word, but if I tap and hold, it'll bring me into my actual themes where I can theme the keyboard however I would like to. So I could choose another one, let's just choose sunrise for example, tap apply, and the next time I go back out to the keyboard, now you can see the keyboard is drastically different. Come back into the settings and we can even change and add in our own words. If we come into the settings, we can change how it corrects words, how it suggests emojis. So this one's actually a pretty decent, but it's a pretty straightforward keyboard. So now what we're gonna do is we'll go into our next keyboard. We'll tap up here, we'll come in. Let's choose TouchPal for this one. So tap on TouchPal, and here I can see this keyboard. This one does offer swipe as well. You can see that one has kind of a different trail here. Didn't really pick up my last name on that one. And if I tap on the emoji in the top right hand corner, I can get quick access to all the emojis. We'll go ahead and come back out to our keyboard. That icon up there, you see this is an app lock. So this keyboard does come with another app that's pre-built in with it called app lock, which now there's gonna be a shortcut onto my home screen for that app as well. So that's something to keep in mind. We have this globe icon, which I can choose my English language or download other languages. And if I tap in the top left hand corner, I can see that I can unlock themes, do my voice dictation, edit text, resize the keyboard, split it, do my prediction, view trends, and even go ahead and view my clipboard. So coming into themes, if we come into here, we can see all the different themes that we can download for this. We can even change the font of the keyboard. And if I tap on one of these, it's gonna download the theme and apply it to the keyboard. So this one is an overall nice keyboard. I didn't really care for the fact that it came with that app lock pre-installed, so that's something that I would have to ding this keyboard for. But for the most part, this keyboard is pretty nice and it does everything right here on your device. So we'll go ahead and switch our keyboard now and I believe this will be the last keyboard we have, which is the Google keyboard. Now this is the keyboard that comes pre-installed on most Nexus devices and you can download this from the Play Store. This does feature the swipe gesture like most of them do. And this is the one that I happen to default to the most. I think that the keys are spaced pretty evenly apart. It just feels nice to type on this keyboard. And what you can do is tap on the bottom left hand corner, and get access to your actual symbols and numbers, and then a short little list of emoji up at the top. But there is usually a dedicated emoji button next to the space bar that you can actually enter into your emoji. Or if you come into here, there's our emoji as well, and I can swipe through and view them all, and even tap through all the different tabs. So that's really nice, and if I tap on the enter button, notice I can actually enter into like a one-handed mode, and if I tap on the arrow, I can choose which side I want that to go on, and then just tap on the full screen button, and it's gonna bring my keyboard back into the full screen. So on the Google keyboard, you enter your settings by tapping and holding on the comma, and then come up to the settings icon there, and tap on Google keyboard settings. And the preferences, I can choose from either a material light or a material dark theme, and I can even choose to show a key border. There's that one-handed mode, which we already saw, and then there are preferences for the keyboard height. We can make it taller or shorter, and then we can even change some of the vibrations and key presses right in there. Now, our dictionary and everything that we do with text correction is gonna sync across all of our devices as well with the Google keyboard. And in the advanced section, I can even show the app icon, hide the app icon in the launcher, which I think is a nice feature because whenever you go into your app drawer, see if I come into the app drawer right now, you notice I have all of the keyboard icons in there. And if I'm gonna use one, I prefer not to see it 
I just think it's a nice advantage that Google Keyboard allows you to hide that. Now, those all those keyboards, again, are downloadable directly from the Google Play Store. So all you have to do is go download them and enable them on your device, and you'll be able to use that as your default keyboard. And like you saw me doing earlier, you can come in there whenever you have the keyboard pulled up on the S7 or S7 Edge, swipe down from your notification panel, and tap Select Keyboard, and this will allow you to select the keyboard that you want to use. So for more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to State of Tech, and we'll see you in the next video.